It's Saturday once again from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. This is live from Abuja, a show that takes you through the events that have shaped the week in Nigeria and across the world, from politics, news, entertainment, and sports. I am Ademola Lawrence. Interesting week, of course, is going to be for Nigeria as the planned protest. Uh, of course, is going to be taking shape. The federal government has been working round the clock to avert the plan nationwide protest against economic hardship. In the last 72 hours, President Bola Tinumbu has met with governors under the All Progressive Congress, with traditional rulers, with clerics. This follows a meeting of the Progressive Governors Forum, while uh, where the chairman and Imo State Governor, Hopu Zonima, invited protest organizers to discuss their grievances and find solutions, as well as the meeting between the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume. Uh, with over 40 ministers on Thursday, which comes after President Bola Tinubu had pleaded with Nigerians to shelve the handbag governance protest slated to commence on August 1. The protest against the economic hardship organized by faceless persons has gained traction on social media and is scheduled to hold across 36 states of the Federation and Federal Capital Territory in Abuja. Join us live in the studio is Nigerian politician and Christ, uh, Christopher Imulemo, uh, a court party uh, presidential candidate. Uh, of course, he's joining me live in the studio to discuss uh, this planned protest and, of course, what are the things that we're going to be looking at as the protest is going to hold August 1st to August 2nd. Thank you for joining us in the studio. Thank you, Imola. Um, so, it's, it's no news anymore. Mm -hmm. The protest... Uh, it's not, we call it the faceless protest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so there's a lot to be, to be talked about. Let's look at first. This administration uh, has done so many things so far to help caution uh, the effects of subsidy, removal, and the hardship, you know, has come afterwards. Uh, let's first start from that place, you know, while the protest, because these are some of the things that the protesters, the protesters are looking at, but looking at what the government has done so far in terms of removing subsidy, in terms of um, um, floating the Naira, you know. So what's your take on this before we now delve into uh, the process? Okay, thank you again. Um, you know, we, we, we now have a government who possibly had a lot of issues at hand. And um, it is no more news that the economy is very harsh on the Nigerian people. You know, everything seems to be <laughs> nose diving, despite the fact that we see that the government has um, proposed or has set out various plans, activated a lot of initiative. We've seen student loan, we've seen, um, you know, palliative being distributed, we've seen a lot of policies. And um, we, we keep seeing all these policies come up, but yet we are not seeing these policies changing statistics of things that have made life very difficult for Nigerians. Food, prices of food had gone up. And, you know, hardship by itself does not have, is, is not based on religion or, or ethnics or is something that is felt by everyone. And we wouldn't say that the government is not doing the best they should do, but the truth is this, the best has not yet shown or has not yet relieved Nigeria from the, from the reality of hardship. You know, so if we're going to be looking at this, what Nigerians are um, clamoring for is that, yes, you know, it's just like a child whose father is doing everything to make sure that they live a good life, but it's not just happening. You know, it's not just seeing it. Cost of things are not going down. Um, it's very difficult for you to, to ensure that the dollar to Naira is being kept in one, it is being reduced. You know, it seems it's a multifaceted um, issues that the government is faced with. And um, I think that is basically why um, Nigerians possibly are calling for this um, end of hardship to see that Nigerians' life, um, you no, know, Nigeria begin to live a life that is meaningful. Nigerians begin to live, um, begin to, you know, it's it's like he said, he said, let the poor breathe. No, <laughs> we want to see that happen in our life, in the life of every Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you know while. Uh, this is very important. Uh, let's look at, you know, um, how, why this protest is being, is being organized. And one of the things that the, the 
uh, the presidency or the federal government is very skeptical of is that you can want to have a protest and we don't know the organizers, mm. the faceless protest. I think one of the issues that has been raised is the fact that the protest may actually be hijacked, mm. you know, by uh, the people who are organizing it. You know, there's also a report from DSS. I think I saw that yesterday. That you know, there, there, are, there are instances where probably the protest might be hijacked. Mm. What do you think? Because for us to have that will happen back in 2020. Mm. What do you think? You know, the federal government and this faceless protesters should be doing, and most especially what the federal government should be doing at this particular point. Okay, uh, you, you know, um, looking at what happened during the NSAS, um, there was a large form of protest in the south part of Nigeria, yeah, yeah and um, we saw the level of disruption. Protests that eventually lead to disruption does not actually favor anybody, exactly. even the country, you exactly. know, it leads to collateral damage, and those who actually lose the mo most are the people, eventually. So, in as much as um, Nigerians are in hardship, and um, you know, we I, I know the government is doing what they need to do, and um, but what is most important is that government at this time need to engage, you know, because one of the major tools that is being used to propagate the the the, the, the news of the protest itself is the social media, you know. I we see what the president is doing, um, meeting with traditional rulers, um, religious rulers, governors, but. I believe more engagement on the social media is very key. We are not seeing that happen. You know, you know look at what the social media has been engulfed by this news, but I think we have less information on social media to actually make Nigerians know what the government is doing. Information at, the, at this critical time is very paramount. Government needs to invest more in ensuring that the teaming youth, the youth who might not really have knowledge or have to know what those plans are. Because when, when, when we see knowledge is very important, but the feeling of hunger is more important than knowledge itself. But there will be need for constant engagement of social media. And more importantly, you know, when this government also started, um, there was also a promise of inclusiveness to make sure that everyone is carried along. Every, I, I contested on that court party. And we also had that feeling that, okay, we also want to be part of this to make sure that we build a country that everyone will be included, everyone will feel as part of. So government should also look at that angle of also extending its hand to everyone that have what it takes to come in and solve this is our country we have nowhere to go to and there are other persons who possibly might not be in that party who also have what it takes to contribute in growing this um, yes that feeling that we are all also part of this is also what is is needed at this time yes social media engagement and opening our arms to ensure that everyone feels included in contributing what he or she has in growing our country I think that would help to also, I believe, reduce... You know, um, okay, so th there was also a meeting yesterday with the Inspector General of Police, and of course, uh, the security of the nation is one of the topmost for them, and that's, of course, their concern, you know, uh, where the IG is saying, <laughs> I think I read, where the IG is saying that, um, you know, the organizers must be, we must be able to identify them, yes. you know, in terms of the, uh, where they stay, you know, the addresses and stuff. But just on, that's on, on the side. But the, the, the concern that IG raised is very valid, you know. But at the same time, the protest is also very valid, you know. Um, while the right of people is to protest, the, the police is to protect the protesters. Yeah. How do we manage this kind of situation so that we don't have breakdown of law and order? Yeah, you know, um, one, there's um, every every Nigerian have a constitutional right to protest, but there are procedures to do that. One, like the IG rightly said, protesters and organizers of such protests should be known. Hmm. They shouldn't be faceless because when they are faceless, you then do not know the, the backup or um, the hidden agenda. And the Nigerian population might not even be aware of this. We saw what happened in Kenya. And if you go back to Kenya today, the Kenya people by themselves might not be proud of what has happened in their country. Exactly. You get, we saw what happened in Ukraine. Though Ukraine is not like a protest, but when there is war, when there is meltdown, it affects every business owner. It affects every institution. It goes beyond just affecting the government and power. So it's important what the IG have said. I quite agree with that. We need to know those who are planning this protest. 
if, for example, I'm not satisfied with the government, I will come out to say it. I am not satisfied. So that is very because I, for one, I also own businesses in Nigeria, and I wouldn't want I wouldn't want what happened at the answers where 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 shopping malls were being looted, you know, where we where, where businesses that were being burned down, vehicles were being stopped. We lost over um, over two weeks of work hour. That affects the economy. So for me, um, I think the um, the the IG is on the right track, and we need to do more to ensure that we 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 we, we not just beyond beyond. Um, trying to look at this phase. Also, immediately ensuring that we look at effect that can quickly cushion the hardship of Nigeria. But well, that is the main purpose. Because if this hardship is not obvious, you know, it will not be, the, whatever plan that might be eating will not be catalyzed. What is catalyzing the plan? I don't know. For example, the Eden plan or the Eden agenda, because we saw what happened in uh, Kenya and we are seeing what is about to happen in DR Congo also. In Uganda. This, yes, Uganda. Is these are these are the things. There was a particular time in was it last year where there was it was coup that was everywhere in West Africa. Yeah. Now it's protest. So when federal government is saying, Oh, there might be a, there might be a possible thought force. Exactly. It's, it's very possible. Yeah. And um, nobody if we truly love this country and we, we must not just stand as maybe opposition, we also must try to defend our country, try to make sure that yes, there is actually but let us go the right way to dialogue, to talk to ourselves. We can end hardship, we can progress as a country without burning our country, without allowing people to hijack a good intention and, and everybody is affected. You know, there, there are also in some quarters where people have said, yes, you know, the, uh, the aides of the president, they are the one talking, the president has not been able to speak to the people himself. You know, do you also share that sentiment that the president also need to speak to the youth at this particular time? Of course, it's part of crisis management. See, when you when the when the top echelon is not speaking directly to the people, it has its own negative effect. I think the president also needs to speak to Nigeria. Nigeria youth want to hear the president. You know, I ran as the youngest president candidate. You know, Nigeria youth want to, so we know what the Nigeria youth feels when um, their parent talks to them. That alone can. Cushing. Nigeria president should come. He is a father to everybody. We are we, not, we are not just seeing him as a president. He's a father. We need a president who is a father, which truly is, to come and talk to the Nigerian youth. Openly, you are my children. We know we are going through high, high, hard times, but this is our plan. We want you guys to give us so, so, so. This is what we are working on. And assure and reassure Nigerian youth. I believe with this communication, like I said, communication, we need more communication. If there is vacuum in crisis, Believe me, you give room for propaganda. Hmm. And that might eventually snowball into what is not expected. So there is need for effective communication. This is not time for people to come up and start defending or castigating. What people need now is to win the arts of the Nigerian youth, win the art of Nigerian people who currently might be going through hardship. You know, look at what's happening to school fees. Look at what's happening to cost of food stuff. Look at what's happening to... You know, income is not increasing, yet expenditure is increasing. Sometimes I, I, I wonder... Those who earn 100,000 a salary, what, what they do with it at the end of the month? You know, you see, rate of distrust, disloyalty in Nigeria economy is now at the highest because people, everybody is just about survivor. Everybody is about survivor. So, so I think it's the best time for the president himself, you know, to come out and speak to Nigeria. Whoever might be advising the president not to come out, or maybe, oh, if you speak, or maybe this thing is being orchestrated by, by, by the opposition. I think it's, it's a lie. It is, it is a genuine uh, pain of the Nigerian people. But we, we want to be sure that this pain is not being hijacked by whatever thought force interest or whatever interest that might want to use this agitation exactly. to, to, to cause disruption. For. So it's a very sensitive mm -hmm. um, narration that the president must look into, come out in wisdom, talk to Nigeria, and I believe Nigeria will listen to the president. And that hope, that hope is what they need. Because as if there is no hope, as if nobody is talking to them. Even at the darkest point of a man's life, hope can become what we look into and give us resilience not to take a negative step. I, I want to ask you this. What are the other social investment um, you know, programs do you think that the, pro the president, the federal government can do in order to cushion this effect of hardship mm -hmm. in the country? Number one, it's policies that encourage investors Look, I'm not even talking about foreign investors. I'm talking about Nigeria, who is investing. For example, look at the Dangote issues that rose up the other time. A lot of employers. See, Nigerians are the first investors to Nigeria economy. If Nigeria begins to have problem 
in investing in Nigeria, if Nigerians are beginning to have not to have trust in investing in their country, believe me, private sector still employed over 90% of the workforce in Nigeria. So we need to begin to look at policies to, that will encourage empl employers of laborers in our country. We need to look at policies that will protect their business against theft, against things that will discourage them from employing more people in their business. It's very, very important. In that way, we would have them. And again, we need to look at the short term effect to food shortage we have in Nigeria. Yes, insecurity has really done us so much harm. And we don't have so much food. If we need to begin to look at what are the technicalities and the mechanisms we are going to put in place to ensure that Nigeria have food. What is the volume of our food bank? What do we have? For example, in Europe, some countries are, are experiencing famine. Yet food is not scarce because they've been able to preserve food in their food bank that will last them for another 10 years. What is our policy? When but, the, but, but the federal government sent, uh, you know, sent over 20 trucks to the different states. Uh, well, even hearing that some mm -hmm. some states have not even, you know, shared that this. With, with all these things, 20 trucks mm -hmm. is just like a drop in the ocean. I'm not saying, yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah. And apparently it's going to take care of some. But we are talking about Nigerians being able to, by themselves, stand and fed themselves. You know, that is it. We are a population of 200 and something million people. The, two, the 20 trucks, I don't believe it's going to feed up to... 1% of those that are in hunger. It's good initiative. That's what government can do. But we, we need to begin to look at larger plants that we cut across larger numbers of people and reduce this hunger to a large extent. Why can't government begin to look at a temporary ways of opening the border and ensure that those who have invested in the same business that might be affected if border is open is given license to import those things in. To temporary cushion. See, when there's a big issue, you must look at the best way to approach it. it might be a little setback, but it's just a way to just at that moment resuscitate a dying victim. So we must begin to look at this thing. Insecurity is, is, is a big issue. Farmers cannot go back to the farm to farm in some part of the country. We must begin to be to invest sincerely into okay. this sector and ensure that farmers go, they are protected. We must begin to look at research and technology in agri in, in all facets. All right. And that I believe would help. Okay, us. thank you very much. Uh, of course uh, it's it's an unending conversation. It's an unending. Let's go on a break. What well, we'll come back, we'll still have more for you on Life from Abuja. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. In Nigeria, almost every part of our lives is touched by the politics we play. Governance, legislative matters, the economy, security, foreign affairs, internal affairs. Have a feel as strategic plays in the political space determine how we live in Nigeria. The players, the drama, chess piece moves. Be kept informed. Watch analysis of major happenings in the political space and how it affects you. Watch Politics on Sunday. Additional charges. The implication of the action which Nama took to caution its high cost of airspace surveillance and security could further lead to astronomical increase in domestic airfares and, uh, by extension, fares on international routes. I still have with me, uh, of course, uh, my guest here, uh, Chris Ebolemo. This is what we're talking about, <laughs> something else. And Nama is coming out to say there's going to be a, there's a possible, in, there's going to be a possible increase in air, in. in yeah. So, you see, you see, this is a part of what we are saying. We are in a season where I think uh, we need to, government need to call all agencies together and say, please, we must do all it takes to ensure that we do not hurt to the hardship of Nigeria. I know there might be legitimate reason to wanting to do this because there are root causes for most of this. Is. Number one is um, the fact that the first subsidy was removed. Yes, even in my manifesto. I also said that we we're going to remove first subsidy. But it is, it is clear, clear, 100% clear, that Nigeria still run a, a, a locomotive economy. As in, we are still running an industrial age economy because we, 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 we lack power to a large extent. So, fuel by itself is still more like driving a primal factor to everything that happens in Nigeria. At this point, it's therefore important that government need to come to the realization that our economy run on fuel utilization. Government must 
begin to take a, 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 a very proactive step to ensure that the concept of subsidy is looked into again and possibly revisited. Because the primary aim of every government is to reduce hardship on its people. So for whatsoever reason, once the people are feeling hardship and it's, con it's increasing, you know, if you look at almost, I would, a little bit that, all the riots that we've had from the Aba women, the Abekuta riot, the SAP riot, they were all about tax increment. We need this to be removed. But it was about hardship. So we must look at it. There might be genuine reasons for this. We are in, we're, we're in a very hard time. But government must look at this situation and try at its best not to ensure that Nigeria is faced with more hardship in what sector. That is very important. You know, just, just on the last note, let's look at Nama is saying mm -hmm. this is very critical for them mm -hmm. at this time because the cost of those enrolls are astronomically going high. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, uh, you are saying governments should come in. Mm -hmm. But government on the other side is not also meeting Nama at, at the middle point. How do we now, you know, get through that, that, that part? The Nama is government. It's not an agency of the government yeah. itself. So we must, in, in other countries, there are things that are still subsidized. You know, in as much as we know we have a government who, are looking at, who is looking at increased revenue generation to ensure that we have more money, but it must be done in Paris pursuit to ensure that hardship is not. This would astronomically increase the cost of flight all over Nigeria. The cost of domestic flight. We will begin to see cost of flight compared to international flight in Nigeria soon. How many persons would be able to afford this? It will by itself have an indirect effect on the cost of product. Now we have inflation, we have cost of food item gone, skyrocketed. And what I'm saying is this. It will further increase hardship. And whatever it is, we need to sit on the round table and look at it. This is the cost of jet fuel. It's the cost of maintenance. And okay, how do we come in as government to ensure that, for now, while we are trying to resolve these issues of hardship, we should not add more to it that will make it difficult to resolve. That is what I am saying. So whatever NAMA has come to, imagine increasing from 2,000 to 8,000, from 6,000 to 50,000, it's, it's an astronomy. Even if there must be increment, this must be properly looked into. Thank you very much, yeah. uh, Professor Chris Mulemo, uh, Accord Party, Accord Presidential, uh, of course. Uh, and tomorrow is uh, Accord uh, Convention. convention. Yes, yes, tomorrow. Mm, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how that is going to yeah. pan out. Yeah. Let's move straight to headlines now. Our federal government to avert nationwide protests once against hijacked disruption of public activities. And of course, uh, President Bolatinubo approved establishment of program management units for out sector uh, renewal. And Senate House of uh, Representatives go on annual vacation to resume in September. Interesting. The Lagos State Emergency Management Agency said the death toll in the building collapsed at the Aruwo Jobe Estate in Maryland, area of the uh, state, had risen to five persons. The Nigerian Governors Forum has reiterated its commitment to improving uh, security and protect lives and property of Nigerians. The Governors made the pledge in a communique issued at the end of its ninth meeting. And in business, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria has raised its interest rate to 26.7% uh, as a 50 base point increase aimed at combating soaring inflation, which reached 34.19%. Uh, for core inflation and 40.87% for food inflation in June. The decision marks the fourth rate hike since its appointment in September 2023 and reflects ongoing economic pressures despite previous increases not significantly cooling uh, inflation. And outside Nigeria, a plane crashed during takeoff in Nepal's capital of Katamudu uh, has, uh, has killed 18 people, according to aviation officials in the country. In South Africa, George Mandi Samaya has been appointed as the country's chief justice as President Cyril Ramaphosa. This appointment marks an historic milestone as she will become the first female to hold the position. We'll go on a break. When we come back, we'll move straight to the AU meeting and what it takes to have another interesting, interesting conversation. We'll be right back. Our planet, our home, threatened by man's activities with fears of mass extinction on the rise. On Green Angle, we examine the issues that affect our environment, seek solutions to put us on track, 
to secure and restore a cleaner and greener world for generations to come. Life is politics. In Nigeria, almost every part of our lives is touched by the politics we play. Governance, legislative matters, the economy, security, foreign affairs, internal affairs. Have a feel as strategic plays in the political space determine how we live in Nigeria. The players, the drama, chess piece moves. Be kept informed. Watch analysis of major happenings in the political space and how it affects you. Watch Politics on Sunday. And promoting cooperation among regional economic communities to accelerate integration. In the area of President Bola Tinubu represented West Africa. He talked about prospects and opportunities, but it appears the drawback towards collective growth in the region is the decision of Niger Republic, Burkina Faso, and Mali to withdraw their membership of ECOWAS. Announce their intention to leave the course. We will continue to engage in this with the view to maintaining the unity of our region. The host president, Nana Akufo Ado, called for the consolidation of continental financial institutions to create a stronger platform for financing development. The need for innovative financing and the establishment of African Union financial institutions to support the second decade of Agenda 2063 is of the utmost necessity. On the sidelines of the AU meeting, President Bola Tunubu held a bilateral meeting with President Ismail Uma Gwele of Djibouti. President Gwele emphasized the importance of Nigeria's role as a leader in West Africa he appealed for Nigeria's support on development concerns and common challenges in his country. And on U.S. election, the possible candidacy of Vice President Kamala Harris is gaining more popularity after an endorsement by President Joe Biden. As many have described her as the hope of winning the upcoming election against President Donald Trump, but there are still many hurdles for her to cross. The endorsement of Kamala Harris by President Joe Biden may have changed the trajectory of the U.S. election, which comes up in about 100 days. There seems to be an overwhelming support from some members of Congress, Democrat governors, and other members of the Democratic Party. The increased campaign donations also points to the acceptability she currently enjoys. In Nigeria, some global affairs analysts believe her nomination is the best choice for the party. She has been performing excellently well as a very notable and distinguished um, politician in America. Remember when she was um, a senator, she did fantastically well. And it was as a result of her performance as a senator, that was what led to her nomination as the running mate to Professor Joe Biden. Kamala is going to eat the ground running as vice president. You can't say that she's not knowledgeable about the affairs of governance. You can't say she does not know the policy that the government has been doing. And you cannot say that she will be a novice, you know, in handling foreign affairs issues because she has done this as number two. Kamala Harris has already scored a point by being younger than both President Biden and President Trump. Another intrigue, however, will be who becomes her running mate as she keeps her eyes locked on clinching the party's nomination. A lot of people are talking about uh, Governor Shapiro of, uh, I think, Pennsylvania. You know, picking, a, picking your vice is a strategic decision. Where am I strong? And where is he strong? Where am I weak that ease or her strength can make up? Now, there are battle line states, you know, that you battleground states that you must 
you must do well for you to to be able to win the ticket to do look at uh, uh, former gov uh, former president uh, trump you saw he speak he picked a, a, a 39 year old man who will be 40 years next month who 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 didn't agree with, with him before but now agree with him to the point that he can even he can die for him but kennedy who is running as an independent candidate you know he was in democrat before he could come back i think he has what it takes he can come back and be the running mate to Tamara Harris. Joe Biden. Despite what seems like an outpouring of endorsement and support, former President Barack Obama has been curiously quiet about Kamala Harris' possible nomination as the candidate to square up against Donald Trump. Mr. Olashukwa says President Obama is a conscious supporter who was also not quick to voice his support for President Biden after his nomination. Well, we'll come back from this break and we'll talk about, of course, the U.S. elections and, of course, the African Union sixth uh, media. Um, sorry, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Is politics. In Nigeria, almost every part of our lives is touched by the politics we play. Governance, legislative matters, the economy security, foreign affairs, internal affairs. Have a feel as strategic plays in the political space determine how we live in Nigeria. The players, the drama, chess piece moves. Be kept informed. Watch analysis of major happenings in the political space and how it affects you. Watch politics on Sunday. fitness um, and age. So here we have a woman that is 59. Um, you're asking me whether I like it or not. <laughs> um, they say that the proof of the uh, pudding is in the eating. Uh, if she manages to get it, remember there's still some hurdles to cross. She will still emerge officially at the convention, like you said, and then we'll also pick um, a running mate. All this will go into, um, uh, you know, determining by Americans, to American voters, whether she's, um, she can be given um, uh, uh, the, the mandate or whether uh, Trump will um, uh, go back to the White House. Yes, so uh, just um, uh, late yesterday, uh, of course, uh, former President Barack Obama and the wife, Mitchell Obama, congratulated uh, VP Harris, and at the same time, you know, uh, gave their assertion that, okay, we'll support you in this um, journey. How do you think that uh, this nomination will change the tide for Republicans and, of course, uh, Trump, President Trump's campaign? Well, um, the Obamas uh, coming, uh, the endorsing um, uh, uh, Kamala um, uh, Harris is a good uh, means that perhaps they will have... Um, the support of um, you know the key um, uh, figures in in, uh, in the Democrats. She needs that if she, she is going to win um, uh, the vote because they will all now go and campaign for her. Okay, what that does is that um, it will also galvanize um, the Democrats behind her, and um, of course there will be there will be some one or two people who may not uh, like her guts or like her. But uh, maybe those will be in the minority. What it will mean is that um, Trump will now face um, a very formidable opponent. Unlike if um, uh, um, Joe Biden had uh, uh, been allowed to, to you know, uh, throttle on, it would have been affected. You know, remember the, camp the um, uh, presidential camp um, uh, um, debate uh, that really nailed um, the um, ambition of. Uh, of uh, Joe Biden. If uh, she had insisted, I think um, the Democrats would not have any uh, chance uh, uh, more than they would with um, uh, uh, Kamala now coming, the Vice President coming on. Uh, she's bringing, remember she's um, an attorney uh, uh, in California. She, she has uh, um, you know, she's been um, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, the con in Congress and then she has uh, also been uh, Vice President now for uh, 
for how many years? Uh, up to three years. So I think um, she will give uh, Trump um, a run for his money. But um, uh, never uh, Trump will never do a, do a push away. Uh, you know that um, he um, he has already started uh, uh, giving uh, his own. Um, you know he has. Uh, he will always label his uh, opponents. He's already calling um, um, Kamala some names like he did all the other candidates. But um, it is going to be an interesting um, uh, contest. Yeah, so uh, like you said, you know, President Trump has already been calling names. Uh, so, but let's also look at, you know, how um, Vice President Kamala Harris, you know, um, took up that challenge after he was nominated by President Joe Biden. You look at the, the record she created in just 24 hours, uh, in less than 24 hours, she, she was able to. Uh, the, the campaign money was able to be, I think, like $50 million. What's your take on the campaign so far from the Republican convention to Kamala Harris raising over $100 million in just, you know, 24 hours? Yeah, um, it was actually um, 81, more than 81 within 24 hours, and then over 36 hours, it was uh, more than um, uh, $100 okay, million. Yeah, it said something about the fact that... Um, uh, the donors who were keeping their money because they weren't quite sure of, um, you know, sitting on the fence with uh, uh, Biden um, uh, re-election, uh, now came out with uh, full blast to say, well, they are now showing their hands that they are behind um, the vice president, uh, uh, Harris. So that is what it is. And she has um, um, already shown her hands. Um, the Israeli prime minister just visited and then after seeing um, um, his, um, uh, you know, her boss, uh, Biden, she uh, met with, um, the, uh, with him and said, uh, listen, this war has to end. I mean, this is, uh, it can be clearer than that. Biden has been, you know, uh, support, we support uh, the Israelis to the hills and all that. But here, it's quite categorical what she wants to do. Listen, we have to protect both sides. The invasion of um, uh, 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 Israel by uh, Hamas is not, is, um, you know, you can't, um, uh, 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 it's condemnable. But also, what is happening now over how many months, the suffering, the, the atrocities that are going on in Gaza cannot be swept away. I think that is what um, um, she has come out to say. Whether that will cost her. Uh, have you know the Israeli lobby because Jewish lobby is very very uh, important, important, very critical in um, in the U.S. But uh, I mean, I think one would rather go with somebody who is uh, not shy to come out and say where they stand on issues, and because she, you will not say you can't come here now and um, begin to you know dilly dally. It is uh, more than thirty eight or 30, almost forty thousand people dead in in Gaza. I mean, cannot really um, uh, uh, compensate or that cannot be equal to how many Israelis that were killed. Those are all, uh, these are, these are all uh, crimes and atrocities. But for it to, to allow it to continue, and the world is just watching, um, under the watch of uh, the America that says it's the, the policeman of the world, I think it's not, um, it, didn't, it didn't show uh, leadership. That is why. Some countries, South Africa and others, are going to the uh, International Court of Justice to, to really let there be ceasefire. Let them um, um, diplomacy uh, take, because at the end of the day, they are all going to negotiate. So why don't, uh, they, why don't you negotiate now? So these are some of the you know, issues that will uh, come up you, with Trump. Um, you, know, you don't know what, you may come out tomorrow and say, well, he's uh, supporting Israel. Remember, he was the one that uh, supported them, um, you know, having um, Israel, having their, um, they are changing the, the, um, the head, uh, you know, the capital, and so on and so forth. So he's quite, uh, Trump is a divisive okay. fellow. Okay, uh, okay. We are not sure All where right. you stand with him. All right, okay, so uh, let's, let's come back home to Africa. Um, let's come to the AU Media Summit again in Ghana. Uh, do you think African leaders can really come together and collaborate on political and economic issues because the region is really, really, you know, uh, needs.
to, to, to be taken care of in terms of economic issues and political issues? So I think um, this is in terms of uh, uh, declarations and pro uh, proclamations. <laughs> uh, EU is never short of it. The, the devil is in um, you know, uh, implementation. And um, uh, so this year, you know, is the, is the year, you know, education is uh, what is being um, highlighted. And then the uh, summit, the meeting in, uh, in um, uh, Ghana was also to talk about it and all the other issues. But they will always come out with these uh, declarations on the economy, on the social issues like uh, devoting, um, you know, giving 15% uh, to health. Uh, they will be a budget of the national budget, but but they never do it. Only very few, and they have also said the same thing about um, education. But look at the number of uh, uh, children out of school. They are well, worldwide is uh, about two forty million, but and Africa has how many guests? One hundred million of it. Of course, Nigeria uh, is leading with uh, more than uh, forty. So you can see. And what does it take to put the, with the wastages, with all the, the priorities are not right? You find uh, the leaders, you know, living large, looking, buying themselves um, uh, houses in um, abroad or in Dubai, um, buying SUV cars, bulletproof, and then all manner of things. Meanwhile, the people are suffering. Uh, oh. You see that um, that it doesn't uh, add up. All right. They need to rethink. They need to recalibrate um, their strategy and prioritize um, uh, some of the pro poor programs to lift people out of poverty. All right, thank you very much, uh, Global Affairs, uh, Affairs Analyst Paul Ejime, uh, for your take on that uh, and on U.S. election and, of course, the AU Media Summit. Thank you. Well, we'll come back from this break. We have more for you on entertainment and sports. We don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Life is politics in nigeria almost every part of our lives is touched by the politics we play governance legislative matters the economy security foreign affairs internal affairs have a feel as strategic plays in the political space determine how we live in nigeria the players the drama chess piece moves be kept informed watch analysis of major happenings in the political space and how it affects you watch politics on sunday Adding a sport now, the long-awaited global sporting event has kicked off in Paris with athletes competing in marathons, swimming, mountain, uh, mountain biking, cycling, gymnastics, and many more. Organizing committee first unveiled a sport-by-sport -sport competition session scheduled last July to mark two years to go to the Games. One notable change from previous Olympic Games is the addition of an extra day to the swimming schedule meaning there will be actions in athletics, artistics, and gymnastics, and swimming. Three of the most anticipated sports worldwide on the same day on both uh, 3rd and 4th of August 2024. Nigeria's uh, president has also sent his best wishes to the team Nigeria as they participate in the Olympics. Interesting. And joining us in the studio to speak more on the Olympic is the sport analyst Sivanos Ofeiko. Thank you very much, Mr. Sivanos. Good boy. It's good Thank to you. join you on the show this morning. Thank you very much. Let's talk about the Olympics and um, what your take. First of all, Nigeria is out there, you know, of course, to make us uh, a proud nation. But what's your first step, first of all, on the performance that we're, we're expecting from Nigeria? Well, it, it's, it? it's good to know that uh, Nigeria, we've started already. Um, uh, we saw what happened um, two days ago on Thursday with the Super Falcons uh, taking on the, uh, their counterpart from Brazil. Yeah. Um, the guests did their very best, and we saw how the, uh, it was, it was um, a close, uh, it was a defeat that uh, probably you want to say, yes, the girls gave their very best. 
Well, talking about the Olympic uh, proper, um, mm. yesterday the Nigerian Olympic Committee did actually issue a statement telling us the number of athletes that will be participating at the ongoing Olympics. 84 athletes competing in 12 different sports. And uh, we are hopeful that uh, we will surpass our... I know the target has been let's, let's surpass what we did in 1996, Atlanta 1996. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, um, as a sports analyst, going by what we see, going by the parameters that we have, going by the statistics that we have, um, Team Nigeria will surpass what they did uh, during last Olympic in Tokyo. Um, you don't think that of 1996 can be possible? Um, it, it, uh, it's a tall order. Uh, it's a tall order because this is, uh, uh, for instance, there have been a lot of uh, predictions about the fact that how Team Nigeria will finish. I've read a lot, uh, all sorts of manner of uh, predictions. But if you look at it, sports is something that uh, it is scientific. Uh, we've been seeing some of our athletes doing very well, especially in athletics. For instance, Tobu Amoson is a medal hopeful. Uh, we are also hoping that the likes of Odunai Adokuro in, in wrestling will, will do us proud. Um, don't forget that the last Olympic we had, um, uh, Blessing of Buru Dudu also in wrestling, yeah. winning a silver medal. Uh, we are hoping this time around that she will surpass uh, what she did last in Tokyo and uh, winning good. Um, Ese Brumo did one bronze. She has been fantastic. We, we have some other fantastic athletes uh, favor hopefully uh, doing well in our, in our 100 meter, 200 meter. So we are, we are hopeful that we will surpass what we did during Tokyo 2020. But for to say, asking me if we will surpass what we did in Atlanta, I think for me that's a tall order. <laughs> what do you think about our preparations? Uh, do you think that we can do better? Uh, our preparations so far, well, we did our best, but the truth of the matter is that um, it is a known fact that immediately after the end of an Olympic, preparation starts immediately. But over here in this country... I, I don't think know, that's probably, a cliche we've always been hearing. Yes, it is something that we know, but again, it goes to show you that... Um, um, we need to invest more in sports. Uh, thankfully, the, uh, the present administration uh, has been doing well, better off than what we had in the past. Um, we've seen how funds are released immediately uh, for athlete preparation, but it goes beyond that. It goes beyond the fact that uh, if you ask every, every good medalist, they will, tell, they will tell you that it takes a minimum of four years to prepare for a podium finish. So we can't just start by camping for eight weeks, uh, six weeks before the Olympics. Uh, that does not, doesn't work in sports. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. So, it thank you so much. It's very short. Yeah, of really course, absolutely. <laughs> but we just hope that we will do better than Tokyo 2020. You are not so hopeful of 1986. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tall order. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Sport Analyst. And that's how we wrap up the show for today. Join us next week. As we bring you interesting stories in sport, entertainment, politics, and of course, our life. My name is Ademola Lawrence. Have a very and wonderful weekend. Bye for now. We'll see you next week.